Welcome back to the shed. I'm Todd, and today we're going to um, do something about this lighting. Hopefully, we'll see how we go. In one of the last houses that my wife and I lived in, we had a little like cellar, little wine cellar area, and uh, I bought this lamp from Aldi um, so that we could uh, light our way to the booze a bit more easily. If you're picking up what I'm putting down. What I thought we could do today is a really simple project where I use this lamp that I bought from Aldi, it's really stylish, um, to hopefully make this incredibly handsome visage even better. Some of you might recognize this incredibly technical piece of equipment as a coat rack clothes hanger thing. Uh, we don't use it we are in the process of thinking about throwing it out and I thought rather than doing that why don't I see if I can use it to make a bit of a stage light to make this incredibly handsome visage even more tolerable. So I'm going to use a drill press, I'm going to use this top rail here, I'm going to drill some holes through the top rail, I'm going to screw this bit of wood on here and then I'm going to use the little uh, screw attachments in the back of the light here to attach to that and in hopefully light up this incredibly handsome passage. So we've got the drill press set up on the bench here. Um, I'm just going to drill some holes through here, but I thought I'd try and make things a little bit easier for us. So why don't we come over to the toolbox and yep, we're going to need this thing. It's a center punch. I'll explain how that works in a moment if you don't know. And we're going to need some drill bits. These are just some cheap frost ones that I got from Bunnings. They'll do the trick quite nicely. All the way in. So this doesn't need to be incredibly accurate. It's not something that's going to be mm, casting light at a certain angle all the time. So basically we're going to eyeball it and we're just going to hope for the best. I, I will try and make it as centered as possible, but if it's out by a little bit, please feel free to go absolutely mental in the comment section letting me know. So I'm just going to use the set square and get myself at about 10, centim 10 centimeters right from the end of this rubber stopper, just to about the middle. Now this is likely going to dent this because it's not very hard steel. Perfect. Thank you for joining me at the other end of the clothesline. So we'll do it here again. Just make our little mark, do a little dance. Get down tonight. Come on, punch. There we go. So, center punch, if you're not familiar with it, uh, it's basically so that your drill bit doesn't walk once you start drilling, particularly on round surfaces like this. Hopefully, this will work. If it doesn't, I won't be surprised. Let's get this show on the road. <laughs> So I'm now chucked up with a, how big is it, 5.5 millimeter bit. Uh, this will be about, well, probably a little bit bigger than the bolt that I'm looking to put through it. But anyway, um, we've got, done our pilot hole. We're going to do our actual hole um, without unclamping, just so that it's in the same spot. Cover your ears. Got our hole, nice. Went all the way through, little bit of tear out on the other end. So just be careful with your fingers if you come to this. Okay, so this is the second side. I have a two and a half millimeter drill bit in there. We're just gonna cut our way through this, hopefully get through both sides. I hope I've got it extended out enough. Anyway, loud noises. And now back to the five and a half millimeter. Now, while I'm not too concerned about things being, you know, spot on level, I would like some kind of symmetry because I'm going to be looking at this a lot more than you are. So all we're going to do just to find that so that our piece of wood is in the right spot on the clothes rack is just going to measure our clothes rack at 87, uh, 870 mil and our bit of timber at 930 mil, meaning it is 60 mil longer. So all we need to do 
is get our set square, bring it to 30 mil. Nice and easy. I don't know if that's going to play. There we go. Yep. And well, we'll do it up this end so it's nice and easy for you guys to see what I'm looking at. And we just simply put the set square up the end of that and we butt that up against it. We get our clamps. Just going to move the camera out of the way for a second. Don't get scared. Don't get scared. And we're just going to clamp that in place if we can. <sighs> Uh, because you should always, 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 always have more than one clamp. We're going to do one up here as well. See? Absolutely, totally, never, ever, ever can you have enough clamps. Look this, we're just going to drill with the five and a half mil bit, just straight through the holes that we already created. I'm not too worried about the workbench surface. Hopefully one of these days I'm going to get a new one. And up at the other end. Take off the clamps. Oh my God, the holes are drilled. No, not very straight either. Well done. Look at these black nylon washers, they were left over from a, um, uh, when I mounted a TV in our bedroom. They should do perfectly for this. It doesn't need to be anything special. Welcome back. We got the holes drilled out a little bit bigger now. So, ah, look at that. I finally did something a bit more correct. Let's try it at the other end. Now, it's gonna be funny if this um, doesn't fit the bit of wood, but I'm pretty confident it will. I'm pretty confident, I'm pretty confident, I'm pretty confident, I'm pretty confident. I'm pretty, pretty happy now. <laughs> I love being right. <laughs> The reason we're using the washer is that this is not very thick material and I'm not very gentle and I will likely crush living shit out of this thing when I tighten it all up. So, looks great, doesn't it? I mean, this looks super professional. Like, this is probably the most professional thing that you have seen, oh, at least in the last 10 seconds. What we're going to do now is we are just going to grab ourselves some masking tape we're going to draw ourselves a bit of a stencil across the back here so that we can line up these screw holes and then we're going to mount this thing and um, see how much more handsome this incredibly handsome visage will become. This is a this works really simply. You just find a bit of painter's tape or um, in Australia we call this masking tape most of the time, at least I hope we do now that I've said that. Um, simply just this is a bit old, so it has the. It, if it tears before the end of it, um, feel free to like lol in the comments or something like that. Ah, look, there we go. We almost made it, but we didn't quite. That's okay. That's all we need. So you just draw it across the holes that you're looking to template. Wow, just enough. Grab a pencil, graphite pencil, and all you need to do is just. Just gently color over where the um, where the pinholes are. If you've done it right, the edge of your pencil will bring out the edges of the pinholes. Once you've done that, simply take it off and attach it to the piece of material that you want it to work on. It may be a little hard to see, but here is the first point on our template. Now that's where the screw is going to go on, so I'm going to just drill it right in the center there. Um, I'm just making a little mark with the, the center punch so that it's going to be easier for us all later. Doesn't need to be anything spectacular, we're only putting little button head screws in. Grab our trusty impact driver, line it up, well, don't drop the bloody screw. Power that screw on in. Oh. Ooh. There we go. Okay, cool.
screws in, take off the template, ready for paint, primer and polish. Okay, so before I show you how this looks on the clothes rack, let me just give you a little demonstration. The light is just here, you probably can't see it. It's like directly underneath the lens of the camera. You'll probably see a flare come up when I turn it on. But this is what it looks like without the light. Now this light has two settings. It has like a warm, yellowish, orangish kind of setting and there's a, like an ice blue. Like imagine walking into your 7-Eleven, it's like that harsh white blue light. A lot of people seem to like it in their houses. I just think it kills moods really quickly. Anyway, to the point. So this is what that 7-Eleven looks like. And this is what that yellow light looks like. Horrifying, isn't it? Truly horrifying. But at the same time, at least you're blessed with this incredibly good looking visage while you have to tolerate that light. So this is what the light looks like um, when it's on, or when it's on the, the clothing rack. Um, as I said, very simple. I've got it hooked up here for you. Um, let's do a quick demo. So again, this is that blue light. Now from this distance, it's not going to do much. This light is mainly going to be for lighting me up when I'm much closer to it so that the camera that I'm using will mm, work better. Here's that nice warm yellow light. Yeah. I'm Todd, you've been watching Horse and Hammer. Thanks for letting me light up your life.